Hello everyone, my name is Ariel, also known as Faux Acrylic, and today I am going to take you on a little journey. We're going to be painting Spongebob today. You can find the step-by-step -step tutorial of this on my website at fauxacrylic.com if you want to use a step-by-step -step and follow along. If not, go ahead and watch the video and just follow along with us here. Today we're going in with this really pretty blue color. Most of the polishes I use are from D&D with a mix of some Ian Nail Couture ones. And I also use a few from ArtistryNailSupply.com. Love their polishes. But you can definitely use whatever you have on hand that is closest to these colors. On the step-by-step -step tutorial, you'll see at the top that I have samples of the colors. So that way you can easily match them or mix those colors to match. I would definitely set up my palette first and mix those colors before I get started. So we're just doing two coats of this really pretty blue. I believe this is D&D 437, which is just a really lovely turquoise color. So now I'm just going in with a light yellow and we're just mapping out where SpongeBob should be. And you want to just do really, really thin coats. You're layering gel polish, so you want to make sure all your coats are even and thin. If your gel polish ever gets kind of crumply or buckly, you always want to make sure that you're checking how thick your gel polish coat is. If it's getting like that, typically your gel polish coat was a little too thick. And now I'm just going in with a dotting tool and kind of mapping out SpongeBob's little waves on the top of his head. I love using dotting tools for steps like this because it just makes it a little bit easier to me and it lays down that gel polish really thin and even. Sometimes your gel polish is a little streaky on the first coat so you do want to go back in and make sure you do a second coat if needed. Typically with lighter colors over darker colors, you will see that happen. So we're just doing that and then we'll do a quick cure. Anytime you see a jump cut, I did go ahead and cure it. So make sure you're curing in between uh, each step. You want to cure in between each step because you don't want your product to run or mix with each other. That's the great thing about gel polish is you can cure in between. So once you're satisfied with the spot and how it looks, go ahead and cure it. For smaller details, I also find it really helpful to use the little flash light curing lights. Um, really handy. I got mine on Amazon for pretty cheap. So go check those out. Super, super helpful. So now I'm just mapping out his little shirt. I'm using my brush. I believe this is the 7mm brush. You can find it on my website. That will also be linked down below. I think I mentioned it in the beginning. And for some details, I do like to go in with that dotting tool. So circles and stuff like that, like eyeballs. Super helpful to use a dotting tool because obviously it's made to make dots. Um, and like I said, it's going to lay those colors down really evenly. This may be a little hard for some of you to see because it is white on yellow. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. But I am just making a circle in the shape of his eyes. And just mapping out where his eyes should be. I love starting with his their eyes. Whatever character I'm doing's eyes. <laughs> because that's going to set up the rest of your character for spacing. This is probably the easiest way to get your guide marks right. So you want to kind of place them in the right spot and then everything else will fall into place. Now I'm just going in with a little brush to perfect those circles. You want to make sure everything just looks clean and crisp. Sometimes the dotting tool can't get those very specific areas. So using a brush to kind of correct yourself is super helpful. And I'll just let you watch me work for a second. I'll be back in a minute.
again we're going in with the seven millimeter brush and we're just going to map out his mouth you want to make sure you're kind of giving enough space so that way you can mark in his nose and his other details later And now we're just going to go ahead and finish mapping that out and filling in that area. And then I cure in between this as well. So I am missing a step right here, but I did just dot his eyes on. Um, I think I just lost that footage. Sorry about that. Now we're just going in with our detailer brush and mapping out his tongue and his teeth. These smaller details can be the most nervous thing. I know that because they're so tiny, so your like hands start shaking, you get nervous. But don't worry about it, just brace your hand against your desk, hold your client's finger steady, and then just kind of go for it. We can always fix things later with the opposite color, so see how this is going to be white. If you messed up on this part, just take that red that you used inside the mouth and clean up those lines later. It's so cute. He looks like a baby right now because he only has one tooth. Again, your lines won't always be clean. Like right here, there's a little spot that may be too far off to the side, but we'll go ahead and clean that up later. Sometimes you just kind of have to do it and then worry about fixing it in a minute. So try not to stress yourself out about being perfect. We can always fix it. That's the great thing about gel polish. It is easy to layer. Remember that gel polish is super easy to layer. Once you cure it, you can pretty much cover any other color with any other color. As long as you're using opaque colors, you should be good. And opaque meaning not see-through. So if you're using obviously translucent or see-through colors, that's not going to layer over something and cover it, but most colors, like the cream colors, are going to be opaque, so you will be able to use those to kind of correct your mistakes. And of course we can't forget his little nose. Now I'm just going in with a dotting tool with like a olive green and we're going to go ahead and make his little holes, his little sponge holes. These are super important because obviously he's Spongebob and he needs some holes, right? So we are going to go ahead and outline him in this olive green color. SpongeBob's not outlined in black, at least on his head. I think his arms are. 
um, but his head is typically outlined in like a greenish color. I do leave pretty much everything but the curing in just so you guys can kind of work through and see exactly what I'm doing and how I'm moving my brush. I don't like to cut out a lot of stuff just so you guys can get the best visual possible. So feel free to skip around a ton um, and just, you know, get the parts you need. Here I'm making his little cheeks. I'm using a gel polish. I really like these gel polishes from e -Nail Couture. They're a little bit thicker, so you can kind of line things a little bit easier and get cleaner lines instead of struggling with more sheer polishes. Um, these are a little bit thicker and a little bit more opaque. So right here I felt like that little pink mark was a little too thick. To thin it out I just went back in with it yellow and just kind of covered up what I didn't like and left the rest. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start outlining the rest of his features. Go ahead and just let you watch this. There's not much to explain other than I am using the E-Nail Couture black gel paint and a size 7 millimeter brush.
Okay, but SpongeBob does look kind of crazy under black light. Again, if you mess up or anything, you can always use the opposite color to kind of fix your mistakes. So I did make a little mess up right there. So once I feel fully cure, I'll be going back in with the white and just fixing that little line that I messed up on. But don't worry about it. Just cure it and move forward. You don't want to like sit there and dwell on it and like get upset with yourself. Just kind of move forward, cure it and fix it in a minute. Lining is definitely the most difficult part of gel painting. I even struggle with it a good amount, but as long as you can figure out how to fix your little mistakes, you're good to go. Okay, so here I didn't want to have to outline the blue part of the eyes. It was a little more difficult. So I started with the black and then I went back in with the blue on top and just got really close to those edges to give that lining effect. This is a really good tip, especially with smaller things like eyes. So that way you don't have to kind of outline each little individual eye. You can kind of just go in and use your dotting tool and make that circle and then cover it with the blue so that way it creates that outline effect without actually having to outline. So see how those lines are a little bit more even than I would have been able to do with the brush. And then now I'm just going back in with his little pupils and it's a lot easier this way. And like I said earlier, all your mistakes, mistakes can be fixed with the opposite color. So here I'm just going in with that white gel paint and correcting all those little lines and mistakes that I don't like. I feel like this is a really important step. You always wanna kind of go back in and just look over your piece and correct any little mistakes. This is going to make your line work look so much more clean and even, especially if your lines ended up getting a little too thick in some areas this is going to be super, super helpful. So right here where I have that line just a little bit too thick, I'm just going to go ahead and erase that with some white gel paint. Just think of it as white out, but with any color. I know this tutorial seems like it's taking forever, but it only took about 20 some minutes to complete this whole character. 
other than the curing. So the curing is what's going to kind of kill your time. So always use that little flashy lamp that's going to help you not have to cure as often. Characters do definitely take a good amount of time, but I feel like as a nail artist, you kind of want to set yourself apart. So sometimes developing these skills is super, super helpful. And if you learn how to do characters like this, then you can kind of do any nail art. So I definitely think it's worth learning. Also, with any other nail art, if you can get these down, it's going to make doing little flowers or little hearts or anything like that so much easier instead of stressing about it. Um, you can definitely stress about this. This one's the harder one. And again, like I said, any mistake you make can be fixed. So we're just going in here and kind of cleaning up those little lines. They may not seem really important because they're so tiny, but I feel like the overall effect is going to look much better if you take the time to clean up all those little mistakes. And now we're just going in and doing the final details. So we're gonna go ahead and draw those little flowers in the sky make this really feel like bikini bottom And we're almost ready. So we're going to go ahead and do the final top coat. I am using a gel matte top coat from Koopa. These are my favorite matte top coats and top coats in general. I use both Koopa. I feel like they just blur everything and make everything look so smooth and clean. So, yeah. Go in with a nice, thick, glossy top coat and go ahead and do your final cure. And this is how the final product turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time. Bye!